Hello, how do you do? Well, it's, it's a Monday for me. I don't know what day it is for you. Last week or two weeks ago or something, I wanted to make a fun skateboard in the shape of a knot. And this is what I did. This was knot board, version one. But today, I got myself some supplies, and we're gonna make knot board, version number two. Is that something you're interested in watching? Well, you're in luck. Let's go. Ooh. All right, I've just blown my own mind seeing that I can do voiceovers in this program. I mean, you'd figure that I'd know how to do this by now, but surprise, surprise. Well, anyway, here I am tracing out the, uh, trying to figure out uh, on, uh, how to make the thick part of the knot a nine inch knot, because that's how big the trucks are. So here I am uh, tracing out this on my uh, two pieces of wood and soon I will be bringing them over to the table to glue them up. And here I am gluing them up. Will this work? Let's see. Okay, so last night I glued up uh, two pieces of wood and I traced this knot pattern on it. And then when I woke up this morning uh, to take a peek at it, it looked like a mess. No, it won't work. So, uh, I decided maybe I didn't want the skateboard itself to look like a piece of rope because that was too weird. I just wanted it to look like a knot. So I imported the image into Flash, which is still what I use for vector uh, images 15, 20 years later. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, here I am messing with a vector image to try to create a smoother looking knot board. I'm really digging this voiceover feature. This is gonna make things a lot easier in the future. Hey look at that, that looks, that looks good. Okay, this is my old projector. It uh, took little three inch cutouts and it's still good for some things but Many years later in my career, I got this. This is a digital projector, which can go directly from my computer uh, and project on whatever I want. Now, that is currently projecting my image onto the floor, and I need to. Uh, I need to trace our buddy onto my wood. So here I am projecting the image uh, from the digital projector onto the floor and trying to find the right orientation uh, for the knot board to fit on the piece of wood that I've glued up. Now much to my uh, surprise, I'm going to find an easier way to do this uh, in just a few moments in this video, but uh, in order to get to that point, I needed to get to this point. Learning in little pieces, but well, there you go. That's basically, it fit well there, but in the end I decided to do something different. Whoa, there's a cat. Well, here we have the beginnings of our new knot board. Now I'm going to cut this out. This big, big piece out with the, the jigsaw here. And then I want to cut each individual part out and then sand them to the contours of how they would be if they were a real knot. Here comes the light bulb moment. Can you see the gears churning? It would probably be smarter if I cut out all these pieces onto the most stablest piece uh, that I could and then fit them together. That would be a lot smarter than doing it like this. 
guess I'm going to have to do it like that. I spared you the part of me tracing the new pieces onto wood. But uh, next, I, it was important I had to go sand it, but my sander was so full of junk it didn't move, and smoke started coming out of it. So I took it upon myself to learn something new. I learned a little bit about my belt sander that day uh, by cleaning all the sawdust out, and it uh, made the Made it work again. It felt good. This is me just explaining what I just explained. There's no need to explain it twice. I've already explained it. It's been explained. Let's do some sanding. Wow. This is one of my most favorite parts. You can chew away a bunch of stuff and make things all nice and smooth and I get to wear my apron like a big boy. I made that apron when I was in high school, when I was about 15 years old, and it still fits great. I haven't grown a foot up or out, thank heavens. And here I am just using the orbital sander to make things look all nice and tasty. I want it to look like a smooth piece of, uh, a smooth piece of wood that bends into itself, you know, like it's in a knot. And uh, it's coming along nicely. Next I took each of the four individual pieces uh, over to the router and uh, routed the pieces that I didn't sand into a specific angle to make it look like the board was bent. Uh, so I just used a round over bit for this. And I went through and I did this for all four or five pieces. Uh, we will soon see the difficulty with the fifth piece which is just a chunk of uh, a curve that I couldn't fit all in one piece of wood. Well, a few parts were left out of this because uh, I was overcome with love for my barking dogs. Anyway, here's the part, here's one part of it. As you can see, it doesn't really meet up perfectly and I wanted it to because I wanted to use the grain of the wood. I didn't want to paint it and have to fill up cracks. As luck would have it, I had this perfect piece here with a knot that I didn't use so I can cut out and try that piece again. I'm very excited about having this. All right. Let's see how my new pieces fit together. Cool. Now here's the part I had issue with. Look at that. Snug as a bug in a rug. So take that off at a little angle and sand this guy up. Well, we're at a very exciting part of our build here. Created all the pieces I need. I had to go back and redo this guy here. And then I had to redo this part here because I had cut it down too small. And I want the grain to go the same way. It would be very noticeable otherwise. So now I'm going to use this piece of brown hardboard and I'm going to trace out the shape of our board here and I'm going to attach it that way so it all sticks together. But now I gotta take out all these tacks. There's a gazillion tacks in here. That should be easy. I took a piece of brown hardboard and uh, I traced the shape of our knot board here and then I'm going to go over to the bandsaw and cut it out. This stuff is fantastic. You can get 8 by 4 foot strips for under $10 and it's got a ton of different uses. Uh, I strongly suggest brown hardboard. After I uh, put all the pieces on the piece of brown hardboard and made sure everything uh, fit nicely and the hardboard was hidden nicely, I uh, grabbed myself uh, some hot glue uh, just to tack the pieces in uh, 
temporarily and then after I did that I flipped it over and I attached it with wood screws uh, so nothing was uh, too stressed and that worked pretty cool then what I'm doing here is I have some wood filler and I'm filling in the gaps that I couldn't get perfect in hopes that it smooths out and I leave this overnight back and sand it up where I'd put my wood filler and now I'm relatively new to the world of airbrushing but every time I do it I learn a little bit more how to mix the paints uh, the correct pressure settings and it is a real cool option to have uh, for a neat look I really I'm enjoying airbrushing very much so I start out with yellow and I was gonna make it yellow but then it uh, somehow uh, I kept working a little darker to darker and the thing ended up looking like a giant hot dog uh, so uh, yeah so I, uh, I did the next logical thing paints and I began uh, painting it with mustard now I already I already hate this design but uh, it looked like a hot dog so I painted it like a hot dog uh, I really wanted to use the uh, grain of the wood but my skills aren't good enough to make tight uh, tight cuts and sands yet so there will be a version 3 of this uh, just uh, <laughs> not today and I, I decided to try to go back and uh, make it uh, look a little better with the airbrush <clears throat> I like how uh, you don't you don't get brush strokes but it was very very it was a very very cold day and things weren't drying very fast uh, so I ended up uh, messing up a few things but you live and you learn uh, I had a good time See, here I am trying to dab off my mistakes here I think the final project turned out pretty cool. Uh, we'll see that soon, but here I am just doing a little airbrushing. I to go in with a brush and just kind of touch up the things that didn't look so super with the airbrush. Uh, just another tool in the arsenal, I guess. things that really holds me back uh, making videos of uh, projects is uh, feeling the need to talk through all of them but now that uh, I've figured out the ability to just do voiceovers like a lot of people do uh, I'm gonna be able to do a lot more because I'm not always feeling chatty when I'm feeling worky you know mixing the two together are usually pretty difficult for me but this format this makes it a little bit easier and the audio is a bit better too so that's nice it's always noisy all right now well, a few more steps all i gotta do right now is glaze this dog up i built this out of an old uh, wire spool and a lazy Susan. This turning bed here. Boy, it comes in handy when you're doing work like this. You don't get your hands dirty, you don't get fingerprints on stuff. It works great. A lazy Susan only costs like this you need a bigger one. It costs about five, six dollars at your local hardware store. 
go to dry up nicely. We're going to put our trucks on. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, it's been four or five days and here we are. At the end of our journey. Look at this shiny boy. Isn't that nice? Looks like a giant hot dog. Now all I got to do is put a few trucks on there. I remember back when I was a kid, the excitement of getting new skateboard parts. They weren't cheap, but imagine that they haven't gotten any cheaper. But, you know. They cost a few dollars. But then when you finally had enough money, put together a board that you liked. Now the, the bummer part is, the older you got, you maybe got a better paying job, then you could afford a nicer skateboard. You had more, you didn't have time anymore. Whatever. Getting older, you know, it has its perks. I mean, I remember being a young man and looking in the mirror, you know, and touching where someday where my beard would grow in. And I just I'd be there and I'd dream and say, wow, you know, I can't wait till the I can't wait for the day where I'm older and I have hair growing out of my ears. Not bored. Part two. Electric boogaloo. Here's a nice photo of that. Compared to the first one, I think we've come leaps and bounds. This is a Veriflex and this is a... This is a Volterra. Maybe this is an old-time Powell, one of the really heavy boards. There will definitely be a third version of this in the future, made entirely of one piece. And then I won't, I won't paint it, I'll just stain it. But any of Thank you for watching. This is a very fun project to do. I'd like to thank all my Patreon patrons. Every month is getting better and better. Thanks to you. I'm getting my love for artwork back. I have a little bit of leeway to do experimenting on things like this. And you all make a gigantic difference. Thank you again, and I'll keep thanking you. But for now, I'm going to bid you adieu. And we will talk again soon, because I have acquired a bunch of hydrocal, I have casting supplies, and I have a bunch of cool stuff I'm going to make next month. Talk to you later.